Hi everyone! Today we're gonna set up the April blood journal theme together and I can't believe it took me almost six years to create a cherry blossom inspired spring theme, but here we are. <laughs> Without further introductions, let's get started with the cover spread and we have a very detailed painting to start with. This is one of those paintings that I added to my shop, so I usually spend a little bit more time on them. I'll need to speed up the process a little bit more in the video, but I still want to show you every step on the way, so maybe you get some tips on how to approach a bigger painting like this. I switched to a slightly larger painting sketchbook. This is B5 and the only reason is that I find it easier to paint in larger sizes, especially when it comes to small details. So this is definitely not necessary. You can paint on a separate paper or do whatever you typically do. We will later scan this image on a computer and I'll print out the final painting in the correct size that fits the notebook. You'll see that I started with a loose pencil sketch, but I mainly focus on sketching this girl who's standing at the front of the painting. I felt like I needed to sketch this part a little bit better because I'm not super confident to paint clothes or humans in general freehand, but most of the other parts of the painting won't really need a sketch. I did mark down the horizon line and did some loose sketches for the mountain and branches, but most of this will be covered by the first layers of paint, so it doesn't really help us much. But anyway, once the sketches are down, let's start walking through the painting steps. I feel like the first step is to paint the background, so that's what we're gonna start with here, and we'll first mix these light pastel shades for the sky. All the tools and colors I'm using are listed in the video description by the way, and I used a medium size flat brush here. I started with a light blue that we're gonna turn into this pastel coral shade, and then add a little bit of yellow to the mixture to create more of an orange tone. My goal for this painting was to keep the colors very soft and springy, but I also didn't want the background color to be too light or too pink so that the cherry blossoms wouldn't show up against it. So finding the correct colors was one of the most difficult things for me about this painting. After the sky was done, I started to paint these light mountains in the distance, but I will actually cover these later with some white paint to get a much more muted, hazy appearance. I also started to take some darker colors to the lower part, which will be some sort of lake, and I wanted this part to be darker in the painting, just to create some contrast and darker color to the background for the cherry blossoms to show up against. I was kind of struggling with the background to be honest, which in the end was pretty unnecessary because a lot of it will actually be covered by the end. So even if every little detail doesn't turn out that great in your painting, try to just push through that phase and trust the process. But now you can see how I covered the mountain area with some of the sky tones. What I didn't realize, however, was that some of the mountain colors were still wet, so they kind of started to slide all over the place. I freaked out a little bit here, but just tried my best to save the situation, and I think in the end I still like the second version better. Anyway, after that I spent a long time on the water part. I wanted some different tones here, which was not super easy to create, but I thought slowly by just layering and mixing colors, and especially after adding some of these sharper white and pink details, everything finally started to come together.
I used a pretty dry brush here to get these textured lines and I quite liked it so I didn't blend them out too much. I also painted some indications of trees and land to the other side of the lake. These don't look that good but they will also be mostly covered by the flowers so I thought it was good enough. And then the last thing about this background step was to add some color to the crowned part where the girl is standing. And I had no idea what colors to use here. So I just went with some slightly yellower greens to tell this area apart from the water. But other than that, we're gonna leave this for later. But then it's time to move on to the second part of the painting, which would be the cherry blossom branches. This took such a long time. I worked on this painting over the course of three days, I think, because I was kind of feeling nervous about it and wanted to keep enjoying the process and come back later to see if I still liked some of my color choices the next day. And I'd say that only this flower part took me at least three hours. We'll start by painting the branches with a dark brown shade and after that it's just small tapping motions with different tones of red. I wanted the flowers to look as natural as possible so I was looking through some pictures of cherry blossom branches and also many paintings with cherry blossoms to see how they arrange the flower branches and flower shapes in the picture to create a flowy natural look. So when it comes to the actual painting part, I started with a kind of middle tone red as the base and after that started to apply lighter and lighter tones on top and some darker red tones in between as well. I wanted especially the flowers in the middle to be very light at the end so we'll add lots of white there and even keep the shadow colors lighter here because I thought this would add a nice effect with the sun in the back.
Again, I was working with a pretty dry brush here to create more texture for the flowers. And I definitely wanted them to look a bit messy on purpose. I think adding small dots in these light colors pretty much all across the painting gave a windy and romantic effect somehow. And we're gonna add even more of these flyaway petals in the last polishing phase. But I think you've now seen me tapping on these flowers for long enough. So now let's move on to the last part of the painting, which is the girl. This is the part I was the most nervous about and I was also really struggling to choose colors here. I started by painting the sun umbrella with this turquoise blue color. We are actually gonna lighten this quite a bit later. I didn't really like how it looked like here. But before that, I started to apply some colors also to the dress. My goal was mainly to keep the dress white, but the difficult thing about that is that you still need some colors to create shadows and shape to the fabric. So again, I applied a mixture of these light blues, grays, and even greens, and a bit of light pink. And after a while, the dress didn't look white anymore, but I was kind of willing to let go of that because I liked how the folds looked like. Again, drawing clothes is very difficult for me, so I was happy how this turned out and don't really know how I did it either. I added this red shoulder scarf to draw some attention and then we also needed to paint the girl's hair. The hair was something I knew I'm gonna touch up on a computer, but I just tried to create as fine strokes as possible using a fairly dry and very skinny brush again. But after that, it's all just small adjustments and final details. So I fixed the umbrella, I added some extra puffiness to some of the flower branches, and I also painted some water lily leaves to the water part, mainly because I thought this lower left corner looked a little bit empty. I realized that this painting is quite one-sided, so I thought I had to add some accents to the other side to balance things out.
But after painting tons of these flyaway flowers everywhere around the painting, I thought this was finally done, so I scanned this to my computer. I'll write the scanner I'm using to the screen, and then I opened this picture on Photoshop and did some final polishing. I think this painting needed way less editing than most of my paintings, but I always fix the colors and the contrast, remove any pencil strokes or dust particles, and then I did some edits to the girl especially. For example, I noticed that the angle of the umbrella looked a little bit weird, so I rotated that and fixed some messiness around the area in general, and I'll show you the final image compared to the original one here because I think it's always the most interesting thing to see this subtle transformation. If you were not interested in this painting portion, I'm sorry it took like five years, but now that everything was done, I printed out the final version on matte photo paper, and you can see how it's now in the smaller size. I must admit that I think the bigger size still almost looks better. Some of the details always get slightly blurrier when you reduce the size, or it might also be the printing or scanning that does that. But anyway, I attached this with a dot liner, which is one of these roll type clues. And then we can quickly finish the cover spread by writing out the April title and monthly calendar to the left side. I wanted this side to be very minimal, I was kind of getting lost on what to do here and what would go together with the painting, so I thought we could just keep it super simple to let the painting side shine. So I started by writing the title, and I was using a font called the American Typewriter, and I sketched out the letters beforehand because it's always very difficult to estimate how much room you need for the letters. Then I showed you these two papers I printed out myself. These are both available to download on the free section of my shop. I'll link it down below. I have many of these free colors, texture papers, grids, and so on. So I hope you'll enjoy using them if you have access to a printer. I made the calendar very small this time, but I don't have that many plans for April, so I think I'll get away with it by using super small handwriting. And then when the calendar was done in all its simplicity, I decided to finish things off with this small color palette. I actually liked the minimal look, so this is how I normally leave things, but since I want to do some shameless promotion of my latest spring collection, I decided to add a finishing touch to these pages with some of my own products. Obviously, you don't need any of this to create a beautiful blood journal setup, but especially for those of you low on time, I think stickers and washi tapes are so useful. And I also know that many of you have thankfully purchased some items from the spring collection already, so I hope you'll get some inspiration for using the products as well. Anyway, I did something really simple here, still trying to maintain the minimal style, and added just a tiny bit of color. This clear pet tape is the first pet tape I've ever designed, and it's one of my own personal favorite products I've ever created. Oh my god, this thing took such a long time, so I had to show it to you guys. And I cut out this small quote out of it, which says, kiss me under the cherry blossoms. But that's finally it for the cover spread, and now let's move on. We'll set up the monthly planning and reflection pages next, and I also added a few things for the second quarter planning. We are starting here by creating a Dutch door. These are essential for me. I'm pretty sure I've had some sort of Dutch door in every theme for the past three years or so. <laughs> Anyways, after cutting the page in the middle, I'll just add a pink stripe to the left side. And since we spent a long time on the cover spread painting, I wanted to do all the journaling parts here first to balance out the video a little bit. So I pretty much divided the space into the second quarter and then the more specific April plan sections. I like to include some quarterly goals whenever I remember to do that. I almost think of these as mini yearly goals, because I think three months is a much more realistic time frame for many new things than only one month. 
So after getting these titles done, I cut some skinny pieces from the pink paper to use as some title backgrounds. And then I separated the second quarter space into these three sections. The first one is challenges or goals, priorities, whichever word you want to use here. And then on the right side, I have some things I'm looking forward to on the upcoming season and some things I want to leave behind. Then let's jump to the April planning. So here I started with this grid box and I wanted to draw a quick clip on top of it, which I've seen a lot lately. And I think this adds such cute, easy details. I will use this box to write freely about my intentions or focus for April. And then I'll use the right side to list a work priority and a life priority, which just means something outside of working. I hope April will be a little bit slower month for me, maybe a time to refocus and set new goals now that my spring launch is finally over. So that's it for this first side of the Dutch door and now let's draw some decorations here on the left side. You'll see that I already sketched out this cherry blossom branch with a pencil and now we'll draw it again using a black pen. I used a similar style as in some of my spring products and these flowers and branches are probably more complicated looking than what they actually are to draw. Having a good sketch underneath will definitely help you out and I would maybe advise you to start with more basic flower shapes and worry about the extra folds and side angles when you feel comfortable drawing some of the more basic shapes. You can go with either four or five petals and I think the trick for cherry blossoms is to darken the middle part and draw some dots around there too. I kept the leaves very small and tried to add the smaller details to the branch itself too so that it doesn't look too clean or straight here. I wanted to leave the drawing like this here, so we are not coloring these flowers. However, a light wash of pink would probably be enough. And if you want, you can add a little bit of darker red to the middle. Before we move to the reflection side, let's quickly set up this right side here as well that I wanted to use for short weekly overview plans. I wanted to use some sort of paper pattern in the background because I felt like this whole space needed a little bit more color. But if you don't own any decoration papers, one quick and easy pattern would be to create this type of grid with a brush pen. Anyway, I settled with this small flower pattern and then cut four small boxes for the four full weeks in April. And after doing this, I realized that this planning setup ended up very similar to what I did in March, maybe with small differences. So I'm sorry about that. I'll try to come up with something different next month. But now we still have the monthly reflection to go over before we can move on to the weekly pages. So here I started with a big title again, and then we're going to set up a few boxes and smaller titles again. I started with a similar grid box as we did on the previous spread and drew another clip here. Nothing fancy, but I think this looked super cute. I'm going to use the first box to write about what's on my mind at the end of the month. So this reflection spread is something I'll fill in the last days of the month and the planning side is something I'll do in the very beginning. Just wanted to make that clear for any new viewers. 
Then under the grid box, I list a few successes and disappointments from April. And then on the second side, we have some room to write about the things I'm grateful for. And then lastly, space to list some of my favorite things from the past month. My reflection pages are often very similar. These are just things that I found the most useful, so I tend to stick with them. And then before we move on, I decided to show you a few optional extra decorations here again. I love the look of washi tapes as these edge borders to Dutch doors. And then I just added a few flower stickers here and there. Nothing much, honestly, because this space was already quite full. But now that this whole two-page setup is done, we can flip ourselves over to the last pages of this month, which will be for the weekly planning. I wanted to go for a little bit more interesting layout here again, so we'll start by cutting the next four pages. And I also left these tabs to the pages. It's a little bit tedious to figure out the placements and cut these out, but I think these tabs look so cute once this whole section is done, and it makes it easier to find the week you're looking for as well. Then I used some more decoration papers, which are all from the same set, by the way, and added these to the sides, and then used the same pink paper for the tops and bottoms of these edge pages. So it will leave us this cute rounded shape for this booklet thing in the middle that we can use for the weeks of April. However, I didn't start the weeks from the first spread this time, so here I first wrote a big weekly plan title and then used some of these stickers to make four quick happy trackers under it. I originally designed these stickers for calendar backgrounds, but I think they work as habit trackers as well. And of course, you could just use some colorful paper or just draw a grid for the same purpose. I've quite liked having a few happy triggers recently. I kind of go back and forth with them. But anyway, then the next page is just going to be for any random notes I might have throughout the month. I sometimes use these sections and sometimes I don't, but I didn't really have anything else I needed here either. So notes it is. I don't know if you can see from the video how all my pens were so dry when I was trying to draw these lines. I love this notebook, but I'm honestly starting to get a little bit tired of how quickly my pens are destroyed by the textured watercolor paper, and I kind of miss something smoother, not gonna lie. But anyway, I left this small empty space in the corner to throw another quick cherry blossom branch I know there hasn't been much drawing in this video after the cover spread painting, which I'm sorry about. I filmed this video in a huge rush while trying to manage my shop launch at the same time, and I just didn't have enough time to do more than this. But I hope we can draw and paint a little bit more next month, and I hope you'll enjoy watching my separate painting tutorials in the meantime. But anyway, after these two pages were done, I wanted to show you how I set up my weekly pages 
pages in all their simplicity. So I have a full spread for each week here and I'll just divide this page for the seven days of the week and here I'll just write some short to-do lists or any important appointments or notes I'll need to keep in mind for a specific day. There is also a little bit of empty room at the bottom of the second page, which you can use for any functional purpose you can think of. But I think I'll just use it for decorations with my products again. The bullet journal is a nice way for me to keep memories of the things I've created over the years. So yeah, I made a quick collage here again using the pet tape and some regular stickers as well. And I also added a few stickers on the first weekly planning side as well. But after that's all done, we have officially finished the April Cherry Possum theme. I really hope you enjoyed this video, whether it was the painting portion or seeing some of these products in action. The link to my shop is in the description and if this was your first time around here, definitely consider subscribing as well if you want to stay tuned for more. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye!